<laughs> oh. Uh. Praise the Lord. Everybody doing okay? All right. Short chapter, Colossians 4. We're finishing out. Oh, my goodness. So, did everybody have a good experience in this Passover season? You know, one of the, the things about keeping the feast, and I, I believe in my heart and hearts, He always intended for us to be in unity all around the world during these seasons and, and worshiping Him. And one of the elements I love about all of the feast and things, it always calls me to reflect on myself. Always a place of repentance. Always a place of, of uh, examining oneself. Can I share a little bit about what I, last month I had to take in the direction of the Holy Spirit, communion every day, including this morning. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and I do it on a regular basis anyway, like once a week, my wife and I do it. But he really put it on my heart to do it every single day. So there were times of repentance. There were times of certainly every day was a day of examination. And a commitment, an everyday commitment, and reiterating that commitment every day, presenting my body a living sacrifice, holy, all of me to him every day. And I learned some things, and I, I remember halfway through the, the, <laughs> the month, I was, just, I was just praying. It was 3 o'clock in the morning, I don't know, something like that, I woke up. It's not unusual. <laughs> and so I was praying. And uh, so I went and got on the floor on my knees. <laughs> and I had to turn to the 119th Psalm is what he had me turn to. I had my phone, so I pulled out my phone. It's dark, and I haven't turned on any lights. And then I remember the last time I read the entire psalm, Instead of uh, you know going to it as a Bible reference for other things that you're studying, and the last time I read that song uh, out loud, I read the scripture out loud. I keep saying that I want to. It's meant to be read out loud. It was uh, when I was directed to fast for 30 days, and so I fasted for 30 days. All I did was drink. Didn't tell anybody. And to break the fast before I ate anything, I sat down and I said, well, what do you want me to read? And I opened up the book and guess what? It's the longest one in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> so I started reading it. And as I was reading it, I was extremely blessed. And I began to weep halfway through. And so I barely even got finished. It was just, you know, it was amazing. And here I am again. I'm, on my knees and a few years later and I'm reading that song again and crying again and, and going, okay, ooh. You would think that would be like at the end of all of the month, but no, it was in the middle of the month. So, <laughs> but fasting and praying and everything that we learn is for preparation. Is that not correct? Are we not being prepared? Are we not to give Him glory all the time and everywhere? Are we not to be a reflection of who He is in this earth? Yes. Like arrows shot in the darkness. Greater the darkness, brighter the light. Yes. And right now, there's nowhere you can run from darkness. It's everywhere. So your light really needs to be shining at this moment. And I'm not a conspiracy theory guy. 
But I pay attention to what is going on. <laughs> In other countries, what I'm doing right now is illegal. Cannot do it. And I certainly can't do it outside of these four walls. Okay? And I'm watching the laws change, and I've seen Christians become, uh, we're considered bigots now. Yes. Okay, so they're throwing dirty words at you, at us. <laughs> being called names, and you're being called names, and you're being persecuted and mocked. And Why? So it's because of what you believe, isn't it? I stood before you and I told you I don't argue with folks anymore, not even believers, because you get a lot of arguments from believers too, because we all seem to want to rationalize our behavior and how we are and say it's okay because it's me. I thought we were supposed to be looking like him. Just saying. All right. You do you. I'll do him. Okay, all right. So I don't argue anymore because I just go to the Word. That's my plumb line. So whenever someone is a believer and I take them to the Word and they still continue on the same path, I'm done. I just turn you off right here like a light switch. Because you put yourself above Him and above his word. And we covered this, didn't it? Didn't we? That's called idol tree. That's what it's called. Just giving you a review and a reminder. <laughs> ah, I read this chapter today, so I don't know what's really going to come out. I just read it. I didn't, uh, some good exhortations in there. I didn't, to be honest, I didn't really study it. I just read it. You go, okay. <laughs> And I just sat there in silence, just kind of listening and did a little worship and spent some time with the Father. And uh, I'm like, uh, all right, it's your word. <sighs> so let's, I'm going to read. I'm going to read. I'm going to do what I do. I was going to read the entire chapter and then go back, but I'm not going to do that. We'll get it through it all. Are you ready? Colossians chapter 4. Masters, give your bondservants what is just and fair, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of the Messiah which I also am also in chains, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. So Paul writing this letter is asking for prayer, right? So we should be praying one for another, correct? Now, if you're in charge of somebody, <laughs> let's not make it clear. Just remember, you have somebody in charge of you. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Yes? Except for you with the warped minds and stuff that like pain and all that. It doesn't apply, all right? Treat people according to the word of God, as God says to treat them, okay? Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant, always being watchful, watchful, watchful. Why are we always being watchful? There's a lot of military terms in Scripture. A lot of, lot of Scripture that tells you to be watchful, to be aware. In other words, don't go to sleep, but watch. Because what? The devil and his minions and those that work are very, very sneaky, aren't they? Yes? Very, very subtle, aren't they? Yes. I'm going to remind some of you, just because someone prays a prayer or reads from the Scripture or quotes the Scripture, did not the devil quote the Scripture in the temptation in the wilderness? He, in fact, he said, it is written, didn't he? 
So that doesn't impress me. <laughs> Your knowledge and being able to quote the scripture, what impresses is the fruit. That's how I know you. If you're not bearing fruit, me, you're not fooling. fooling. And how do I know? Because I'm quiet and I'm listening. <laughs> try it sometimes. When you're in a conversation, try it. Be talking to people and just listen to what they say. And listen to how they say it. See if what they're saying agrees with what the Word says. If it goes along the same biblical pattern. Back in the days of Messiah, there were, the spirit of the Antichrist was already in the world, was it not? Anti-Christ, anti-Messiah, anti-Jesus, anti-Yeshua was already in the world. Anti what? Anti his character. We find the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. So that anti-spirit is anti all of that. Everything that he tells you to be is anti that. If he tells you don't be offended... The Antichrist spirit wants you to be offended. If he tells you not to get angry and hold things against your brother, the Antichrist spirit tells you to hold things against your brother because they shouldn't have done that to you. I heard a preacher say one time, and I love this quote, don't let a sin against you become a sin in you. Make sense? Yeah, it resonated with me. That's why I haven't forgotten it. Yeah. Come on now. So he goes against what the Word says. And speaking from experience, have bought into it myself and justified my behavior and my heart, condition of my heart, and who I was. Because I wasn't being treated fairly. But neither was Jesus. Neither was Paul. He's writing this letter from jail. <laughs> Just saying. If we're going to compare, I mean, I'm just saying, we're going to do the apples, oranges, things. If, I mean, if you've hung on a cross and didn't been raised, from, okay. Yeah, I may listen to what you got to say. I'm just saying. <laughs> so we continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in, in it, in prayer, with thanksgiving. Oh, jeez. I'm going to stop there. With thanksgiving. Verse 2. I got a phone call today. And my phone call, the person on the phone, he said, I just felt like I needed to call you. And the Holy Spirit was leading me to call you. And I just want to ask, I got, I, I was supposed to give you this question. And, uh, and I'm going to give you this question. And then I'm going to, I'm just going to hang up because I don't know what it's all about. And I'm like, okay. I said, okay. So the question was, um, what is it that you allow to steal your joy? I'm like, so they hung up and I sat there because I know I say a lot, I'm not letting nobody steal my joy. And then he allowed to run through my mind. Because I, when I listen to my, when I'm driving in my car, I got praise and worship music going on all the time, okay? Unless somebody's called or something. It's worship music all the time. And there's been times in this month that I've been driving. I've gotten almost to my destination and have not sang along with any of the songs and had worship. 
at all, but I was thinking about where I was going and what I had to do and then what I got to do next. And, 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 and it just, you know, and I'm like, and then all of the traffic and the people driving crazy in the traffic and being congested. I'm thinking about all of those things. Am I being joyous? So after that question was asked, I'm sitting there and I'm just reflecting. I'm like, oh, you got me again. But thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And, and I was talking to my wife after she, she got home for a little while. And, and this is the thing, man. I, you know, and I'm trying, I don't have the balance for it yet. I just ask him to show me how to do it. Uh, because the last couple of months have been really, really heavy, if you will. And I've reached a point sometimes of just being just totally exhausted. Didn't even want to move, didn't know if I could move. Because uh, drained. And I know when I get drained that I am doing too much and not allowing him to do. Are you following me? Because whenever I've been out and, and served him and, and, and I used to go out every, for once a week, every year and go stay at a church and just do evangelism all day. And I worked on two hours of sleep the whole time, pretty much that I was there and never got tired, just full of the spirit. And just, it was incredible. I, you know, when I got tired, when I finally got to drive home, I got home I get to the house. Hey kids, boom, 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 hit that couch or chair. And boom, I'm out. <laughs> but moving in the Holy Spirit, no fatigue. <clears throat> and so I said to the father, you know, even after this re revelation, I said, I'm not, you're right. You're right. You know, I haven't expressed joy in my heart like I should because of the heaviness I see and hear. I said, but how do I balance this thing out? Because you show me things, then I weep. And I repent for the body. I weep, I cry. You show, and I cry, and I weep. And I'll just allow you to flow through me. What? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to handle this? How in the, in the past, I've always been able to just give you stuff, but it's like it's so, so much. And he, and he said to me, what have I taught you to do? Praise. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you're interceding and you're praying, and sometimes when even family members or somebody is heavy on your heart and you've cried out to them and, and it's allowed him to break your heart. Now the next thing you do is you praise him because he used you to intercede. You praise him because it's in his hands and not in your hands because you are powerless to do anything other than, yes? And he inhabits the praises of his people. Every time I quote that and say it, I feel the Holy Spirit stirring me. He's enthroned upon the praises of his people. So when it's released, it fills the atmosphere. Not only the atmosphere, but it goes into your ears. And your faith has been strengthened. Yes? But if we carry the burden, then you'll carry the burden and it will be too heavy for you because it's not for you to bear. Hello? Yes? I'm talking to you from experience. I'm, I'm sharing with you. I'm being real open. I'm not trying to stand up here and be, act perfect. I'm trying to give you some tools because hell's already been released and you guys are going to go through things just like I go through things. So your focus needs to be on him. He keeps me in perfect peace whose eyes are stayed on him. Was my eyes on him? No, they were on the circumstance. Though I was still praising, though I was still doing what I needed to do, 
I still need it to be in that place where I can have my peace. And then I thought about Yeshua. As we just did Passover. And I thought again, I shared that with y'all. Remember when he was on the cross? <laughs> what did he ask the Father to do? Forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. What do you mean they don't know what they're doing? You know what they were doing? They were operating out of human nature. He was operating out of the Holy Spirit. Those that are called by him operate out of what? Say it. Holy Spirit. Not human nature. The human nature must what? Die. Yes? It must be brought into subjection. Must it not? Okay. So here he is on that cross. And then he cries out. Why did he cry out? See, it messes with me every time I think about it. He who was in the beginning, the word that was in the beginning, the word that was God and was with God, always known God, part of God, came from God. He spoke and he walked and he walked. died a spiritual death before the physical death because the Holy Spirit withdrew from him so that he could become sin for you and I, that lamb. Think about that. I like to make up a fictitious story sometimes where the Father's in heaven and he said, I need someone to go down and to die for these people. And the son says, I'll go, Father. And the father says, well, let me tell you what you're going to have to do. And he, he says, I, you're going to have to suffer. He goes, I'll suffer for him because you love him, I love him. And he says, okay, son. And then listen, they're going to scourge you. And they're going to mock you. They're going to walk away from you. And he goes, that's okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And the father says, I got to tell you one more thing. He says, son, when you're on the cross, I'm going to have to withdraw from you. And the son went, oh. <laughs> like in the garden. Is there another way? Is there another way? No. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Never forget that sacrifice. Because that is what is required of us. It's to die to ourselves. It's at least that we can do for his glory. The very least that we can. Help me, Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm not going to cry. Woo! So Paul said, Meanwhile, praying for us that God will open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ, in which I'm also in chains, that I, make, I may make it manifest as I ought to speak, walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, redeeming the time, making good use of your time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one, seasoned with salt. I just learned recently that salt, we always talk about salt as a preservative, but in the scripture, this salt means it's a fertilizer. It's used to fertilize. So we're talking about fertilizing what? <laughs> So the harvest will grow. That means to be salty, to be like fertilized. In other words, you can't be that way unless you're around people that need the light. If you're hiding from them, you can't be affected for the kingdom of God. It will not grow. 
We must be mm, willing to do whatever it takes so that we can. He spreads us around and we fertilize the ground. And then one comes and sows a seed and another waters and he gives the. That's how it works. Glory to God. Glory to your name. Let me finish this out. I'm going to finish reading the letter. Because this is beautiful. He's writing about these brothers. Tyche is a beloved brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant. And the Lord will tell you all the news about me. I'm sending him to you for that, this very purpose, <clears throat> that he may know your circumstances and comfort your hearts with Onesimus, a faithful, beloved brother who is one of you. They will make known to you the things which are happening here. Aristocrus, my fellow prisoner, greets you with Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, about whom you receive instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. And Yeshua was called Justice. These are my only fellow workers for the kingdom of God who are of the circumcision. They have proved to be a comfort to me. Epaphras who is one of you, a bondservant of Messiah, greets you always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has a great zeal for you and those who are in Laodicea and those who are in <clears throat> Aropolis. Luke, the beloved physician, Demas greets you. Greet the brethren who are in Laodicea and Nymphos in the church that is in his house. Now when this epistle is read among you, see that it is read also in the church of the Laodiceans that you likewise read the epistle from Laodicea and say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord that you may fulfill it. This salutation in my own hand, Paul, remember my chains. Grace be with you. I'm closing with this. If you are in leadership, stop trying to do it all yourself. Equip people that they may be about the work. Find out the giftings and use the giftings and let them Use their giftings, because if you don't use them, you can't grow in them. Yes? Okay. So one man has already done it all. One man cannot do it all again. You see, Paul wrote while he was in prison, and he wrote letters, and he gave great exhortations and compliments about these men. You can trust them. They're, I've observed them. These are men of God. You know, listen to what they say. Right? So what, what did Yeshua do? He discipled. And what did the disciples do? They discipled. Right? Okay. So what are we supposed to do? Disciple. If, you, if you're not sure about that and you, and you got any questions, go ahead and read the prayer that Yeshua prayed in John chapter 17. Right? Before in John chapter 17, he says he gives the protocol. I don't pray that you would take them out of the world, but that you would keep them from the evil one. And I pray not only for these, but those who will believe me because of their word. That's you and me. Because the word kept going, we're believers. Yes? If you never heard it, you wouldn't know it, would you? So how can other people hear unless it is spoken? I'm going to encourage you to be, like Paul says in one of his letters, a living epistle, read of all men, not with ink, but with the Holy Spirit. Yes? Where is the Holy Spirit? Where is the Holy Spirit? Are you temples of the Holy Spirit? Are you children of God? Are you joint heirs with Christ? Are you ambassadors for him? You speak on his behalf. Yes. Do you carry his name? Now, his name is his character and his authority. Character first. Do you carry his name? Are you the lights 
in the world. So you manifest him. You let your light shine, which is what? His presence in you, correct? His character in you, correct? Yes. Okay, then get busy. <laughs> the time for sending around has passed a long time ago. Get busy. I'm not trying to make it difficult for you. I'm not saying you got to do what I do. But wherever you are, be always ready and have a word in due season. Doesn't mean you got to knock somebody over the head with something or point at them and do all of that. Just let him flow through you when the opportunity arises. Look for it. It could be just a simple thing as helping somebody with some groceries, and putting them, helping them pick up something heavy. Simple thing like that. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. God bless you. Oh, yes, God bless you too. Simple. What just happened there? Then you like shine. You just put somebody's mind in the mind of, I'm scared, though, to open doors for ladies because they don't want you to open doors for them no more. So I, mean, <laughs> I, 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 do, <laughs> I, I do the best I can. I'm like, oh, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Because I've tried, I've tried to do that a couple times before. I'm like, what are, you, what are you doing? I can get it. I said, I'm sorry. That's just the way I was raised. When I was in the Army, I used to get uh, basic training. I uh, had one female drill sergeant. And sar f female drill sergeants, you did not call ma'am. That was officers. You said sergeant. And she'd be, I'd be walking by her. <laughs> uh, Good morning, ma'am. Ma'am, I'm not a ma'am. I'm a sergeant. And she'd make me drop and do push-ups. And after about the, I don't know, 10 or 15th time, she pulled me aside and she, she said, Smith, why do you keep saying ma'am? I said, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Sergeant. I, you know, I'm 21 years old and this has been in my head and I've been taught this all my life. And if I didn't say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, there were consequences. And uh, <clears throat> then being from the South, that's kind of how I was raised. I mean, you just it's just a polite thing to do. I really don't mean any disrespect. I'm going to try harder, but <laughs> and I don't mind doing the push-ups, but I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm not trying to be funny. I just, you know, my conditioning. And so... She said, uh, she said, okay. And uh, so every time I saw her from then on, I would, she'd look at me and I would go, how you doing, sir? <laughs> <laughs> it was hard to break the conditioning. That's when you get grounded and you're walking in this. It's going to take a lot to break your conditioning because your mind has been renewed. And your focus is on him and you're walking with him. Consistency, right? Confession, commitment, consistency. Yes? All right. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your living word. <laughs> and I pray, this is my prayer, that all of us, as we minister, we will all minister from that cup that overflows because we have been anointed, even as it says in the 23rd Psalm, and because we have been anointed, our cup overflows. And I thank you for being with us always, even as you promised that you would be. Thank you for the gift of Holy Spirit that dwells within us. Teach us and give us wisdom. Thank you for the purging. Thank you for the cleansing and the washing. Thank you for the sanctification. Thank you for the conviction of Holy Spirit. Set our feet on the right path 
and give us the strength and the wisdom to continue in that path, no matter what may come. For greater are you that is in us than he that is in the world. Blessed be your holy name. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. For more teaching and information, visit us online today. Come and be a part of our fellowship. Here at The Seed, enjoy worshiping and learning God's word with us.